Hello, everybody, and welcome to Forward Motion. I'm Karen Allen. Our most attended guest, Mary Emig, is back again. And really, she's back because when I walk on the street or wherever or e get emails, it's from you people, God bless you for watching, asking about Mary Emig and what she has said about fats because she is the authority on fats. You may remember, I don't know, a couple of years ago, she wrote this book, Eat Fat, Lose Fat, which was one of not actually a, met, a few books you've written, actually. Oh. But this was a pretty big one because it really was it's controversial, talking about the importance of coconut oil, uh, which would many, many, and most articles and diets and magazines and et, et cetera say is bad oil. So it's a bad fat. So Mary is back. And the thing I want to start off with, a nutritional biochemist, of course, right. PhD, University of Maryland for many years, and you still speak all over, don't right. you? I know you've yes. been uh, quite a few places domestically and internationally even, talking, giving workshops about healthy eating and fats, right? That's right. Recently, um, the Washington Times had an editorial called Special Interest Secret Recipe. It had to do with the Center for Science and Public Interest. Uh, and, and Mary Enig is mentioned, and I want you to tell me, just to just briefly explain what they were talking about and in, the, um, in the editorial because it was it's, it, it kind of kind of gave you the credit that I think you haven't had uh, in a sort of a more ex exposed setting, right? right. Because yes. you were talking about trans fats on this show 15 years ago. That's right. And no one would listen. And in the last few years, it has exploded. Right. And, uh, and the Center for Science and Public Interest, which is a nonprofit group, you have said it's hard to get them on the show, um, especially with you. But you have said that they have an agenda. And anyway, talk about what the uh, editorial said, because that's really interesting. The, uh, the editorial uh, had said that the Center for Science, and uh, uh, another center, had pointed out that CSPI, Center for Science and the Public Interest, was writing in their Nutrition Action newsletter about the fact that trans fatty acids were good. Right. And nobody was paying any attention to what they were saying at that point. And then all of a sudden they switched. And they switched to, oh, trans fatty acids are bad, and we've always told you that they were bad. And basically what it amounted to is uh, the, um, uh, we wrote a number of things saying they lied. That's all there is to it. They simply have lied. And that they uh, had caused a lot of uh, discomfort because they had put a lot of people heading in the wrong direction. And they came over to the University of Maryland and tried to do some uh, talking when the University of Maryland wanted to put the labeling on packages in Maryland mm -hmm. so that people would know, oh, well, these have trans fatty acids in If you want to avoid the trans fatty acids, you can know that it's there. The head of CSPI, Michael Jacobson, came out to uh, uh, the uh, me, uh, the um, University of Maryland? No, not the University of Maryland, to the uh, uh, place where they were having the hearings in Annapolis. Okay. And handed out some of the things that I still have all of them, where they were saying that trans fats are not bad, et cetera, and so forth. In other words, he challenged us and he was giving out this misinformation, and then all of a sudden they he ended up switching. And they ended up switching because there were some people in Europe who were putting out research, and they realized, uh, I guess, that they were um, completely wrong, but they didn't admit to what they had been doing. And so there's a, a long list of publications that they had put out in which they were saying that the trans mm -hmm. was okay. Mm -hmm. And now and we know trans fatty acids, right. partially hydrogenated oils, are very bad. That's right. And I think. That's been publicized now in the last few couple of years, and they're actually on the labels now where it says trans fatty right. acids, and you really should try to have none if yes. possible. Right. And they're, they can, just to remind folks, they can be found in baked goods, cookies, candy, uh, cookies, cakes, biscuits, donuts, um, pancakes. That's right. You know what? They're in like hot chocolate mixes. That's right. Soups, bouillons. I can't believe if you start looking at the labels how much of that is in there. That's right. And which is hard sometimes when you're when oh, you it's, very, it's very difficult people peanut have butter to, right. people have to read 
uh, everything yeah. on the label, and most people just either don't want to bother to do it, or they uh, ignore what uh, what they're told. Now, when it comes to the trans fatty acids, mothers who nurse their babies when they are eating trans fatty acids put trans fatty acids into the babies and the babies end up with vision problems mm -hmm. that goes all the way out to they've measured out to 14 months wow. and then just recently they uh, reported that mothers who take in trans fatty acids when they are pregnant mm -hmm. seem to be producing offspring children who have the wrong kind of signals going on with their satiety. In other words, they're not able to feel hunger and that's therefore right. they overeat. And they overeat and they get obesity. Heavy. And we have obesity. Which and is a big problem. Was, right. And there were people who were checking the obesity problem in adults in Pittsburgh, one of the medical schools, and they found that people who ate trance, and I think they were using women for this, the people who ate trance ended up with a heavier body mm -hmm. for the same number of calories mm -hmm. that they were taking in, that the control group was taking in. And also trans has to do with heart, your heart, right, cardiovascular. Right. It has to do with a lot of things. It has to do with the immune system. And there are, there are just many things that it screws up because it screws up the way the body gives the signals. It replaces my favorite fat, which is saturated fat, that everybody says, I don't know what I'm talking about. And of course, I do know what I'm talking about. And the people who think that there's something wrong with saturated fat are wrong. Uh, We're because that's where, that. the, that's where the signaling uh, yeah. goes on with people. That is used, huge. Yeah. yeah. With, yeah. That is, I should just, that's exactly, that's one of the biggies that I wanted to talk to you on the show again. I can't read anything, any of the diet books, and I read a lot of them that says that saturated fats is okay. Any magazine article, if you talk to an average nutritionist or dietitian or whatever, everything I read says that saturated fats are bad, which means, and what do we mean by saturated fats, by the way? Red meat? Oh, red meat, milk, whole, whole milk, milk whole, whole food dairy, whole, da whole, whole dairy products. And Nobody, even your pediatrician uh, will tell you, right. two-year-olds should start over two year olds. Cotton start seed oil is about 30% saturated fats, but nobody mentions that because they like to use cotton seed oil in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the manufactured foods. Uh -huh. So you, you end up with a lot of misinformation. And then, of course, coconut oil is saturated. It's a big amount of saturates, but it's all meat, almost all medium chain saturates. And medium chain saturates have a very interesting property where they lower the rate of oxidation, the, the rate at which fats are, uh, are utilized in people, and they make people thinner. Mm -hmm. So all of the people that had all of the coconut oil taken out of their diet ended up losing that extra help for the, for the uh, obesity, mm -hmm. but more than that, what's in the coconut oil, the fatty acids, the lauric acid, the body uses to kill bad bacteria and bad viruses. So you're losing beneficial components when you don't have the fatty acids that are coming from coconut oil. Mm -hmm. And you can't have non-saturates, you can't have no saturates in, in this kind of an oil because these Fat, these special fatty acids are saturates. When, you, when people talk about saturated foods, uh, saturated fats, and they tell you not to eat um, a lot of them or and keep it down, you know, um, it, it, like I said, steak, red meat, um, it is shocking to me how wherever I go, I, you know, they say that your fringe, I've heard the word fringe, um, and I don't know how to handle, and I don't know, maybe the people watching as well, I don't have the explanation for it because one woman is saying <laughs> that saturated fats are good and everyone else, and I mean everyone, I mean the South Beach diet, the reality diet, you know, you can pick up a book and I, I get a lot of them from publishers because I'm interested to see what people are writing. Um, there's nobody that says. Well, the one person who did, of course, uh, died after he fell and cracked his 
head right. on the on Ad the ice, and yes. that was Atkins. Right. Because he realized that. Uh, but he was hi highly criticized as well. He was highly criticized as well, and most of this criticism comes from people who just don't understand the science. It's as, it's as simple as that. If but they could come and stand in a laboratory, I stood in the laboratory for years at the University of Maryland, and we did the research, and uh, the people at the University of Maryland uh, know that saturates are, are uh, perfectly okay, but not the people in the dietetics group. The people in the dietetics group have been given the misinformation that comes from the food industry, because if you don't have saturates in your diet, you have to have something which is the equivalent for cooking and baking, and that something is partially hydrogenated mm -hmm. vegetable fats, and they now are in this bad situation where they can't use them, they're going to have to get rid of them, and they don't know what to do because they don't know what to replace them with. And the best thing for replacing them, of course, is uh, something like palm oil or coconut oil or beef tallow, which is what they uh, used to use a uh, hundred years ago. Well, or if, when you talk, and you have talked in the past about eating the way we ate a hundred years ago, right. but then I talked to some trainers at the gym, and you know, just kind of seeing what the perspective was, and the question came up that about how our lifestyles, not the same as it was, we're not as physical as we are, uh, you know, we don't move as much as we were a hundred years ago, and that times have changed, and that it's different when, you know, the chemistry part of it is, um, you know, is different than the practicality of living a life. Th so they are like, okay, you know, they're not on your side there. Right, but they, they really, are, they're, they're not on anybody's correct side. And they're in a situation where they uh, say, well, you've got to lower one component but if you lower one component, you have to raise another component. And they have, now I, I know one of the books that you've been looking at recently. The Reality Diet? The Reality Diet has, it's a, it's a quote unquote low fat diet from one standpoint, but it's a high fat diet from the standpoint of nuts. Right. Because right. it's got loads and loads of nuts in the, uh, in the diet. Yeah, and, and the South Beach people, Diet too. Right. You and can a have lot nuts. of people couldn't eat that. Because they're allergic. They're allergic. So they could eat, have other fats. They could have other fats. But what other fats are they going to have? But none of them, South Beach or this, to, lets you have whole milk products. That's right. And what they're going to find in the number of years down the road is that children who don't get whole milk, fortunately they get it when they're being nursed. Right. Uh, and they get it from even from formulas because mm -hmm. most of the formulas, most of the formula companies know that it's essential mm -hmm. for uh, infants. But down the road, they're not going to end up with their brains functioning as well. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we see an awful lot of that. We see a lot of children whose brains are not functioning very well, whose uh, activities and their, uh, their attitudes are not uh, what we would consider uh, desirable. And you've got to ask yourself why. Now, what is it that has happened mm -hmm. in our uh, lifetime. When, my, when I was raising children, fortunately I knew what was going on and I had uh, training and when I went to, back to the university my children were pretty much uh, basically grown up and uh, my grandchildren basically have uh, been given an opportunity to have good, mm -hmm. good quality real foods, good quality whole foods. Right, obviously processed foods we know are out. Right. But they're, the advertising in the food industry, they're heavy on the advertising for convenience because people don't have time and, you know, to, to make things from scratch anymore. Right. And, and if you look at the cake mixes, they have partially hydrogenated. Now, it, to their credit, a lot of things have come out now without partially hydrogenated. Right. Um, by the way, it still can have a little bit in it. I think it has to be under like under zero point five, five In the United States, yeah. it has to be under 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 in some of the other uh, countries. And is that little amount still harmful? It depends on how much of it you're eating. Yeah. yeah. So and yeah, in, De sense. in Denmark, they want to get rid of it altogether. They, uh, they don't Where's the it? disconnect here? I don't Where's understand why Mary Ennig is the only one, well, relatively. Where is the disconnect that you are um, alone, essentially, 
a lone voice, and every every ma everywhere else, every, every magazine, you can't talk to anyone because they'll tell you. I low fat, low fat, low fat. I get telephone calls from reporters, and I tell them what's going on, why I think the way I think. I point them in the direction of books, et cetera, and things of that sort. And then their editors change what mm -hmm. they write. It's, very, it's, it's most interesting. So half of the time, the office says, don't answer them. Don't call them back. Don't do, you know, yeah. you're wasting your time. But um, before Ravenskov, who yeah. you inter, uh, interviewed, who is... Well, we talked from, about his book, actually. about his book yeah. from uh, Denmark yeah. and uh, Sweden, has decided that he's going to write a book basically saying that this whole anti-saturated fat story is wrong. Yeah. It's just wrong, wrong, wrong. He has now looked into uh, some more of it. And I, uh, all I know is that those people who are pushing it are pushing it because they're trying to salvage the partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Mm -hmm. They're trying to salvage our huge soy industry. Yeah. I, they'd so be I, better off putting it into the diesel motors and things of that sort. <laughs> and I hope they do, yeah. because it's fine, uh, fine there, but it doesn't really belong in people. What do you have to say about uh, a low-carbohydrate or almost a no-carbohydrate diet? Not good for most people. There but, may be a few people who can consume it, but it really is not appropriate. Your body needs fat for building all of its tissues, for building the cells, for building the uh, mm -hmm. different parts of the body and the signaling uh, um, components. And if you don't have it, uh, your body just doesn't function appropriately. And that's, that's, that's been studied. And what happens is that the papers are written, because this is what they find when they do the uh, research, and they then are not talked about in the... Uh, Mainstream. Mainstream, right. I don't, I don't get that. It's, it's, it's disturbing. I find, I find it very, very, uh, very odd. And then you have people like Center for Science and the Public Interest who are pushing what the mainstream is, right. uh, is saying, all, and that's all wrong. I, I have no idea what's doing with them, except that they've had it wrong since the 1960s mm -hmm. and the 1970s. Um, when it comes to dairy, then, is, is dairy okay? And, and, should, and shouldn't it be whole dairy? It should be whole dairy. Not low-fat anything. Well, they like to take the fat from dairy and put it into ice cream. You know, they, they make more money in mm -hmm. uh, uh, different ways. So you have to sort of say to yourself, well, who, who is it that's pushing all of this? Now, Center for Science and the Public Interest tried to get all of the schools to take whole milk out of the uh, uh, school yeah. lunch program. Yeah. And of course what they did is they put uh, chocolate milk in. Yeah. And chocolate milk is... Sugar. Yeah, it's added sugar and added... That's uh, amazing. Um, ...things that are not really appropriate for people to be eating because the kids don't like the skim milk. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't even like it. It's hard to get milk. used to drinking skim milk after whole milk, I'll tell you right. that much. That's for sure. Right. Um, and my kids can't stand it because all they've had is whole milk. That's but right. people look at me funny because, you know, you're giving your kids whole milk. But it's also more filling than skim milk. Therefore, it's, it's you know, you're, you're sated, right? Right, right. You know, and then you don't eat other things that are inappropriate. One would too. hope. I think dieting comes down to portion control, right. which, hey, I don't have that under control. But I think it, that, that's an exercise. If we could kind of balance that somehow and stay positive, right. it's hard to do. But um, people want quick fixes. They want to be able to mm -hmm. read a book. Yeah, and do it. And do it. And be done. And be finished, do it one time, and, uh, and have it work. And that's not the yeah. way uh, things uh, run. Okay, what about the artificial sweeteners that we've talked about in the past? I know that stevia is your number one, right? It's the um, herb that's your number one? It's an herb which is so sweet that it is the equivalent of the artificial sweeteners. Yeah. I don't really use it, but I don't add sugar to things. Oh, but Mary, I don't, I've tried but, it in my coffee, and it just it's a bitter aftertaste. Uh, I want my sugar. Is Splenda that bad? What is wrong with I know sweet and low, we, I think, pretty much saccharine. Splenda has chlorine molecules added to it. Okay. Splenda, I'm not quite sure how they managed to get Splenda through. So but it shouldn't be, it's not okay. I don't think it's okay. 
I, uh, I haven't been able to, uh, I haven't been able to justify it in, in my mind's eye. So we're not but sure. It could go um, either way. Maybe because it sounds like a great idea and it's, it tastes better than, it, than the others. Right. We know aspartame you don't taste, is not because not you don't you don't taste the uh, chlorine. Yeah. In it. Okay. But it's not. It's a it's a uh, chemically altered sugar. Yeah. And as a chemically altered sugar, um, I'm, I'm not, not so fan. sure how good it is for uh, for children. And they advertise that it's yeah, to be consumed bake by with it and everything. Right. And you bake what about it. adults putting it in your coffee? Well, I drink coffee <laughs> without sugar. I can't. So I, right. I drink uh, I drink coffee with half and half. Yeah, me and too. That gives a I even like heavy cream. I'm yeah. guilty. Yeah, well, for my coffee, I do. but just I for my coffee. Also. Yeah, and I like to put and I have to add sugar. I just can't drink it black. But every so often I want to have Splenda, so I because I like coffee and I don't want to have the sugar adding up. But I I guess that aspartame too. Yeah. I think we've previously discussed. They, they, what you know, they pretty much realized that it's a all those it's diet sodas. Yeah. If you want to lose weight, why is I got to listen to certain people's uh, brains, namely my husband. Why is soda bad? I don't mean uh, sugar soda because we know that's bad. Is it so bad to have diet soda if you're trying to lose weight? I think that there are sodas that are sold in the health food store that, that are that better have, that are better because they don't have aspartame or they're right. sweetened with. Well, they have, there's some with Splenda. Okay, now I haven't That's seen not, those. I haven't. Yeah, I, and I don't. There's one called see, Waste Watcher. Yeah, you don't. You I don't, don't need purchase it. these. It's so big like, in my house, and I got to keep my kids away from it. So there's only one person drinking it because well, I'm anti-soda. One of the things that that we have done is take seltzer. Yeah. And pour it into uh, a juice. Right. Like it, we do that. It's, in, a, it's in kids' cookbooks. We call it excellent soda. We do that too. Yeah. But then they don't like it. But don't ask me. Okay. I'm trying to run through everything because we only have a half an hour, and there's so many questions. Okay, um, you're still say, maintaining, back to the beef tallow and how we ate 100 years ago, you still say that that's how we should be eating even though times have so drastically changed and we go from the car to the computer to the TV? So you use less. So you, you, don't, you don't eat a big pie or a big cake or, you exercise or a dozen cookies. But you at least make it with an appropriate kind of uh, a fat. What about how's uh, what about organic foods um, versus non-organic, like fruits and vegetables, or chickens, or milk, or eggs? They're better. They're much better. better. Definitely. But if you can't if you can't get them or afford them or afford regularly, them, then you go and you purchase as as good a quality uh, food as you as you can. Yeah. And that's one of the things that um, some of the organizations that I've been involved with are doing. They are pushing farms, mm -hmm. small farms, mm -hmm. farmers, and uh, mm -hmm. asking them to do things a better way. And this right. is, as a matter of fact, this is what a lot of uh, a lot of the farming is going is doing now. The farming in Europe is into, mm -hmm. if you want to use that terminology, mm -hmm. organic. Organic. And you now, one of the things that some of the people have discovered as they have studied what's going on is that the foods that you purchase now and that you evaluate and examine don't have as many nutrients in them as they did 100 years ago. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So that's sort of like you assess you, well, yeah. what's been changed in the mm -hmm. past 100 years? And a lot of it is the uh, way in which the food crops are made with artificial uh, mm -hmm. uh, like the genetic uh, engineering and yeah, stuff and and things where they add a lot of extra uh, s uh, soil uh, management uh -huh. stuff and it's not the way it was mm -hmm. and so the, the people who were working in this area will just simply have to mm -hmm. decide what they're going to tell people and and the people who are more worried and so forth. We'll have to start doing more reading okay. and things of that sort. Eggs and chicken also organic better? Yes. Milk too, for sure. Yes. Is milk? Yes. Is it harmful to buy milk that's not organic? Probably not really, but you don't know how much pesticides I know, in it. and bovine, hormone, whatever. Right. I, don't, I right. can't keep track. There's so many things and I have so many kids to feed. <laughs> right. And it's hard and it's unaffordable and we you know, don't live next to a Whole Foods either so it's a trek it's just it's a whole thing to do and we go through honestly 
like seven gallons of milk a week. Yeah. I'm honest to God, these children drink a lot of milk. Yeah. Well, um, it's better that they drink milk. And as I recall, I've seen pictures of them. They're nice and healthy looking and slender and, and yeah, so forth. Yeah, well, they're varied, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Cod liver oil, you, we, should we still be taking that? Yes. In the cap, the uh, jelly, whatever. The I prefer the spoonful, but I grew up with the <laughs> spoonful. But you can still take it out of the... Right. You can still what about omega-3 and omega-6? Because they're talk, they talk about supplements. You can buy them at the health food store. Should we pop those? I, you don't need to pop omega-6 if you use the natural oils that are out there in, uh, in things like... Flaxseed? Um, uh, yeah, well... Flaxseed's uh, an omega-3, okay. uh, high omega-3 uh, type of oil. But what you have is you have mayonnaise. Yeah. So mayonnaise is made with different kinds of non-hydrogenated oils that are mostly omega-6. So if you have a spoonful of mayonnaise with your sandwich, you're ending up with omega-6. Okay. If you have some... Not light mayonnaise, right? No, no. The regular... You can uh, make your own right? mayonnaise very easily. Yeah, regular mayonnaise. And as a matter of fact, things like uh, olive oil. Olive oil doesn't have very much omega-6 in it, but it has omega-9. Your body makes omega-9. doesn't need really to get it from okay. any place, but it certainly can get it from olive oil or it can get it from avocado. So why in the world should you take a pill with a little bit of omega-9 right. in it? You, well, you it. can take a whole spoonful in, right. uh, in uh, salad dressing and things like that. And the omega-3 come from fish and the fish salmon or any uh, any of the fish cod liver oil um, and uh, things of that sort so you shouldn't have you, to supplement you shouldn't have to supplement it in little capsules okay so just get Except, it you know, unless you have okay. people who are allergic to certain things right. or they like to they like to pop little pills Another half hour has flown by. You have got to come back more often because the questions just stack up and the diet books are out there. So I can't thank you enough. Mary Enig, once again, Eat Fat, Lose Fat, controversial book. And uh, Weston A. Price Foundation, we Weston could mention a. .org. Right. We can mention that because I know that you have some articles on right. that, right? Okay. Right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Forward.motion at Comcast.net is my email. Hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.